Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm Dave Stevens, and I am your host for today. I've been on a diet lately. I've lost a lot of weight. You're only a shadow of your former <laughs> self. <laughs> With me here, Gordon Bruce and Andrew Lanning. We're going to talk about cyber safety uh, this Halloween on a personal level and on a company level. And then we're going to talk about uh, what's uh, required for you to be a vendor with the DOD for cybersecurity requirements. Welcome, guys. Hello. Hello. <laughs> you're, just a, you're just a portion of your regular self. They only invited part of me here. Myself. I didn't get a full invitation, so I didn't send my full self. You've obviously gotten into ketosis, <laughs> I can tell. Yeah, right. I wish it was this easy. It's the keto diet? The yeah. keto diet is working out tremendously well. <laughs> Zero carbs. This is what you get. This is what you get. So right. is Halloween going to be a trick or a treat? Well, it's, uh, well, the Koreans want it to be a trick. They've Ooh. upped the game, right? The Koreans. And now with ransomware, that's really scary stuff. Uh, South Africa has been now victimized. There's a Johannesburg. Oh. Yeah. Uh, we had Atlanta ransomware. Oh, that's right. right. Yeah. Big cities are going down now. Quick clicking uh, on them email links. <laughs> Especially the ones from Andrew. The ones that come from me, don't click on those. Yeah, the Nigerian Not today. Uh, click on this PDF. Yeah, it's always a PDF, right? Uh, Is it? That's what they're doing? Uh, it's embedded in a PDF? <laughs> Nobody wants to get rid of Adobe, though, do they? I love no, Adobe. No, Adobe's built into our lives, right? But you just can't have them PDFs come in your email. Let's, let's review some basic stuff, just for the basic cyber hygiene uh, at home. Okay. Right? At so, home? At home. Uh, uh, change your password. Make it a passphrase. Yeah. Right? Um, have separate logins on the computer for everybody. Yes. Right. So you know who logged in and how long. And, and, and even that's users, you know, versus the administrator of the machine. Right. right. Yeah, you get it separated so your kids shouldn't be an admin account, right? You don't want that. Nor should you probably. Right. It's, it's best <laughs> if you have uh, just basic privileges and then when you want to do some admin stuff, you log into the admin account. Uh, change the password on default password for any device you put on your network. That includes uh, smart TVs. People aren't looking at smart TVs. Right, they just uh, hook it up, it attaches to the Wi-Fi, and these smart TVs have microphones. They, they don't look at them? They have cameras. What are they buying for? What? The, smart the TV. TV. <laughs> <laughs> They're not looking at what it's got. They, yeah, they don't. They yeah, don't. How, about, how, about your, how about Siri and oh. Uh, oh, Alexa? No. And no, Alexa, don't Google. Use Alexa. Oh, and my gosh. Don't do it. Don't yeah, do it. Yeah, so. Tracking everything you say, yeah. trying to, uh, quote unquote, improve the experience by recording your conversation. Exactly. Right. Wow. Um, they, and they put that in their contracts now. Now, if you're not worried about your privacy at home, you don't have to listen to anything we say. Right. <laughs> it's only inside your house. Yeah, yeah. Right. Privacy, you know, it's not my, important. My there. recommendation is don't have a smart TV in your bedroom. Oh, right. Lord, no. If you smart do, TV in your bedroom. No, you don't want a smart TV in your bedroom. It's not smart if you do. But now we have smart refrigerator, smart uh, vacuums. The Zumba has gone Wi Fi. It and has. And is it the, viral now? Do they have a problem with that one? The Enviro? No. Did somebody put a virus? I haven't on heard it? of a hack yet in a vacuum cleaner, but, you know, it's coming up. Uh, ref refrigerators and. Uh, and DVRs mm. uh, have been hacked already and used for uh, DDoS attacks against Amazon. Yep. Yeah. yeah what can't be market. hacked, really? There's what can't be? What can't be turned into a that's criminal? That's why you have to practice toy. good hygiene. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's so scary these hygiene. days because even so medical hard. devices you can have implanted in your body, pacemakers, instead of having a hole in your chest where they plug in, uh, now pacemakers have a Bluetooth connection. So that's what happened with the. That's why only part of me got here today. That's what it was. <laughs> We've Somebody been hacked. They disappeared me. <laughs> and that got hacked early on when the Bluetooth and the car oh, pacemakers yeah. that got hacked early. Yeah, and cars. Oh yeah, that's cars. been around for Shut a while. Shut it down. Turn it. Turn it off. Start your car. Yeah, start your car. Which is dangerous because some people forget and leave their car in gear. You you know uh, we didn't say, but I think. Um, a lot of people aren't aware that they can turn on multi-factor authentication for a lot of the stuff that they do, you know, personally. Let's talk about and what multi-factor authentication is. Yeah, I think is. it's a good thing because, I mean, it really can stop some problems. There's, there's a few different forms where you can get a text or you can get an email or you can get a, you know, like email you a code or email you a text that you have to put in along with your email. Or you can run like the, 
What's the app like Microsoft Duo, Authenticator, Authy, Authy, Authy. Um, and I think the even now the Yubi keys, right? So you have to have a key oh, with yeah. you, and that's yeah. those have come way down in price. I think they're only like forty or fifty yeah, I bucks like now. Those. They're not one of my favorites. Yeah, because what because what do people do? They lose them. Well, they, well, they leave them plugged in. They all leave it in the machine. Yeah, yeah. They in which case, in all the time. yeah, then yeah. that way the it's useless. if someone's using your account, obviously, and the thing's plugged in there, well, they, they yeah. get to be used. Yeah, so. the dongle's stuck in the machine all the time, and now you've got a oh, and I just use my four-digit code to get in because the dongle's there. Yeah, because the dongle. There. Right, so, right. so you know if you implement a practice you have to practice the practice That's right. you can't just like have an implementation it can't just be a policy it can't be a policy right. you can write a policy but you get it but then it. you have to have a procedure and then you have to have some sort of implement implemented tool you gotta check back and then you got to yeah. do it actually and then you got to track it and then you got to ask somebody to watch you do it because you most probably won't do it because <laughs> right, you're right. lazy because <laughs> security versus convenience that's right well i think for most small business owners that's what we think right we're we're so enveloped in our, our little world, our little yeah. work bubble, that we got to get stuff done. And it's just not in our heads to follow these security In procedures. our heads? Pun intended. In our, <laughs> in our heads. <laughs> Wait, yeah, we're drifting. Which mm -hmm. is, uh, okay. Sorry. Right. Yeah, um, I think people just get so wrapped up in their own little world that they don't want to go through these procedures. And with multi-factor authentication, it does slow you down a bit. Not that much. But you just, need it. Just a little bit. And um, when people mention uh, multi-factor authentication, when you get a text or you get an email with a code, that's called out-of-band communication. It's yeah. other than the channel that you're on. You're on the internet, but you got it via text yeah. and device, right? Uh, I got I to gotta warn people there is a SIM card attack. That's right. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. the new one. So, uh, you can get personal information from uh, you know, the web, the dark web, and use that to call a, a cell phone vendor like ATD or Verizon. And, uh, okay, no liability here. I'm not accusing at and of Verizon of this. But uh, you can call them and ask their customer service to change over your SIM authorization to a new device. Yes. And so all of everything that you were authorized to do on your phone now is on your hacker's phone. A criminal's you, phone. Criminal's phone, right. And this is, this is a horrible attack because then two-factor authentication gets bypassed. Yeah. Right. So then there's another thing that's happening. There's a few, if you've got companies that are giving your employees mobile devices to use, it's really easy, and you better have with whoever the carrier is, you better identify who is, has the authority to make a change. Right. Because what can happen is someone can walk in and say, I'm working for XYZ company, and um, I lost my SIM card. You know, can, um, so I just need to get another SIM card, can get you know, all yeah. set up, and so on. And if there, there's no one person's name on the list, and they've just got a list of all the employees, or they might not even have that, people are going in and getting those, getting those SIM cards added, yeah. and now I'm on, I'm on that company's network. Yeah, if you're with, we're with Verizon, you can definitely put a person and a passcode with that so that that cannot yep. happen to you. AT&T without is well. authorization. I set that up a little while ago. It's uh, is a yeah. good thing, I think, because uh, I think my daughters kept calling in. <laughs> to make changes, and I, I had to shut that down. Yeah, they, that, can, can we get more minutes? They kept changing Can we get more minutes? Yeah. Can I get more bandwidth? Uh, you, one, of, one of my favorite YouTube videos is out there uh, that uh, a lady calls in, and this is called uh, vishing, voice phishing. Oh, yeah. She got uh, a cell phone provider to change the account over to her, saying it was her husband. With the baby yeah. crying in the background? Right. Yeah. That that's, one, the that's the one. That's the one. Fantastic. It was just so well done. And she's what? She's a 26-year-old, yeah. pretty blonde girl. You, you can't trust anyone these days. And there was no baby. It was just a recording on her computer. Yeah. She From YouTube. Using, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, it sounds real to the person on the phone, I suppose. Wow. So you can, you can really bypass a lot of this stuff. Uh, social engineering is about 90% of the first incursion of all hacks. Because you have to trick somebody into yeah. doing something to bypass the heavy security like the firewalls and the locks on the doors and so forth. And the thing about Hawaii is we tend to be very accommodating, right? Hawaii, Hawaii is more like, oh, let me help you, please. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm more than happy to help you. Let me help you. you know, so people go out of their way to provide you that assistance, not knowing that they're actually creating a problem. Right. They're making a bigger problem. Yeah. And, uh, it's, it's a scary world we live in. So, uh, oh, and if you buy a new device, change the default password. Yeah. Yep. Otherwise, you sh show up on, what is it, showdan.io. Yeah. Every IP address out there in the entire world that has a default username and password for a device shows up on Shodan. Yes, mm -hmm. And you can just look them up. And since, and since he borrowed, brought it up for the small businesses, we should talk about that. If you you know, that reconnaissance phase that, that criminals go through when they're, when they're checking out your company in this first phase and looking for weaknesses in your people or you have an open, you know, computer laying out in the lobby that no one ever pays attention to or something. 
um, in that reconnaissance phase, that's when you can find out if people are targeting you. So if someone does walk on your property, train your people to question that behavior. You know, escort them back to the front and find out why they were there. Don't just like hand them off to the restroom. Oh, it's that way. You know, tra- <laughs> you've got to train your people to uh, want to query people that are on site that they don't recognize. You know, facial recognition is a good, you know, a good indicator of, right. of that's really you. I recognize Dave. I know it's you. I recognize Gordon. I know it's him. But, you know, if you see somebody in your company and you oh, don't know who it is, I could be like, it could be, <laughs> yeah, I could, it could be like, like you. Or could be, oh, oh. I could have disappeared, <laughs> or I could be back, or I could disappear, or I could be back. But, uh, you know, you know my point. So, like, so, so teaching people to challenge people in a polite way. It doesn't have to be confrontational, but, you know, hi, how are you doing? May I help you? Um, who are you looking for? And then, you know, you're trying to get that person back to the lobby. You need to be, be aware of your own uh, personal safety. This person could be violent. There could be a real problem there, but, um, you know. Or they could just be war walking, which Gently, is really they, common. Yeah, because yeah, they're going to they're gonna come and check out what's vulnerable in your organization. They want the easiest way and not the hardest. So the, the, one of the biggest uh, vulnerabilities that I've seen out there right now is uh, people have a public Wi-Fi in their waiting room. Oh, yeah. So uh, people go, they make an appointment, they sit in the waiting room, and that's the Wi-Fi. And it is not separated by any kind of VPN. From well, the, and, the and they should. Network, your, yeah. your guest network should be on its own network and yeah. not sharing anything in your network. Yeah, I don't, in my waiting room, you can even in my training room, you can use the Wi-Fi out on the street, <laughs> the Spectrum Wi-Fi, the wireless. Because yeah, it's, it's a little bit too powerful. There's a node out front. You know what I mean? So really? They, yeah, yeah. So since since we have a service for them, that can use that public Wi-Fi. Oh. So I don't even let salespeople come in and like do a demo and use my Wi-Fi. Like, oh, sorry, no, nope. you don't get on my network. That's good though. Yeah, yeah. Need, you're a security company. Yeah, I mean, that's what be. you do. <laughs> well, I was. Uh, part of me is, but uh, there's part of me that's here and part of me. Oh that's yeah, not. yeah. Well, your body's still working. So, you know, your boss is happy. In theory. In the- his body? <laughs> no, we got his head. His body's gone. <laughs> All right. Uh, what, other, what other practices can we uh, say? Oh, gosh. Uh, okay. let's, let's Small bring this business. Up. Let's Small businesses. Personal. Windows 7, end of life, January. Yep. Amen. Uh, do not have Windows 7. I know, everybody. Windows 7 is awesome. I love Windows 7. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a great too system. Bad. Solid. Yeah, too bad. So if you keep your Windows 7 system and you want security patches from now on, Microsoft's going to ch- start charging you incrementally increasing it uh, year over year. So you might pay 100 bucks a, a, a year for this year to keep your security patches on the Windows 7 system. But next year, you might pay 500 And uh, I think they did this with Windows uh, Server 2003. Um, five years in, it was a quarter million wow. to support that I can't server. imagine any person... Or small business still running, having any reason. I mean, computers are so cheap today. I just don't know if people know. Well, yeah, but I can some, give you an example. Some few hundred bucks, right? You can go. Well, it's not just that. It's, not, it's, it's, the, it's app- the interaction with all the it's other the application side. I know uh, voicemail systems. So, so uh, your phone system. I know of phone systems, and the voicemail system is Windows 2003. And there are companies I know today uh, that are still running their phone system with their integrated or interfaced voicemail system mm. that's running on Windows 2003, so they they which just, is connected to their network. They don't okay, want so to upgrade one, right? it. Your, your VoIP system, voice over IP, IP system, very commonly connected to the main network. Yes, yeah, it's your no, no, why Don't ever do that. Yeah, why? Disconnected because you have you can, SIP on there. SIP is really well, not, has, not you everybody can attack has a voice. You can do oh. a voice uh, attack on the phone and actually do uh, freaking, which is frequency attack, and fool the phone and get access to that server. Once yeah. you have access to that server, you have a pivot point to the rest of the other networks. Yeah, it should be totally segmented. It should so, be physically air So a lot of people, just yeah, again, my comment to them is if you've got a phone system, you've had it around for a number of years, you say, oh, I just love our phone system. But there's high probability that if nothing's happened to that phone system in four or five years, it's non-compliant. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's hackable. Okay, we're going to take a break. We're going to pay some bills. We'll come right back. Until then, everybody, stay Ooh. safe. Whoa. Keep your heads on. <laughs> Hello, I'm Mufi Hanavan. I want to tell you about a great show that appears on Think Tech Hawaii. It's all about tourism. In fact, we call it Tourism 101, where we talk about the issues and challenges that faces our number one industry throughout the state. We'll have some interesting guests, some very informative dialogue, and allow you an opportunity to maybe learn a little bit more about why this industry is so important for our state. It's been great for us in the past. We need it today, and especially going forward. That's Tourism 101 on Think Tech Hawaii. Mahalo. Aloha. My name is Mark Schlav. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. 
My program airs every other Monday at 1 o'clock on Think Tech Hawaii. Most of my programs deal with my own life and law experience. Recently, I interviewed Alex Jempel, who I have known for over 30 years, about his voyage across the sea as a lawyer from Tokyo to Hawaii. Those are the type of stories that I like to bring and like to talk about. Human stories about law and life. Aloha. Welcome back. We're still floating around and we're going to talk about what you can do if you do business in your business with the Department of Defense, especially if you're in the DIB. What is that, Andrew? What's the DIB? The Defense Industrial Base. And what does that encompass? Uh, supply chain providers to those manufacturers and service providers to Department of Defense companies. So Department of Defense organizations. Almost every industry is included in that. Water, power. Uh, well, that's Critical infrastructure, sure, and, and those, so many of those do have contracts, so they may be considered tier one providers, yeah, like, like Hawaiian contract. Electric does, yeah. uh, Board of Water does, for example, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Different place, different areas, different, different places. So now uh, we're having uh, all of our vendors to the DOD that are private companies right. have to uh, comply with a, a, a subset of the rules that have in, been instituted for military and governmental organizations. So government has... The National Institute of Standards and Technologies, NIST 853. Very nice. That's for rooms. That, it's for everything, base included. Bases included, yeah. yes. So uh, then they took a subset of that, um, 110 of those controls, and made them the 800-171. And they said, you must comply. And no one paid attention. So, <laughs> yeah. That's what yeah, thank That was 2015, right? Uh, now they're saying, oh, now not only do you have to be uh, compliant, you have to be certified as compliant. So they're making a certification organization who will go out and certify all these organizations that they have 800-171. This is called the Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification, or CMMC. Welcome to the Halloween episode. The Acronym Horrors. Acronym Horrors. So we're going to read a lot of them. <laughs> Enough to drive you mad. <laughs> Let's talk about the DFARS difference real quick and then they... Right, so that's a d yeah. Defense yeah. Federal Acquisition Regulations. Yeah. That's DFARS. Let's talk about that for, for a second because that's where this came out. Yeah, of. that's just sort of the guidance, right, that points to the NIST 800-171 control set as the uh, framework of controls for yeah. cyber maturity uh, in an organization. And there's different levels. And there's some other, other clauses in, that, in the DFARS as well. They can bite yeah. you, yeah. right? And we've yeah. talked about those before. So there's, there's different levels. If, you're, if you want to be cybersecurity maturity model certified, CMCC, CMMC, you have to get certified by an organization. You get a level one through five, uh, one being the lowest, high being the most secure. And it uh, depends on your organization. And yeah. as you were saying, Gordon, a couple seconds ago, uh, this is just best practice. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, level, mean, one. Le yeah. Level, yeah, one, level one, level one. I don't care if you're a law firm or, or whatever you're doing, is that right now, because of this 800-171, there's a whole set of rules, protocols that you can follow. And even if you just say, okay, I'm going to be at level one, um, even though I'm not doing DOD, you will then be practicing mm -hmm. very good cybersecurity hygiene. That's right. And then you've got a way to measure it. You've got, there's, there's free tools out there. Um, that, that you can use, and so I would encourage anybody that's doing business that your goal needs to be um, at that level one certification. Now, if you're doing DOD work, you've got to be three or higher, essentially, I think, in, in, in most cases, where you won't get the contract. Right, so that it's a go-no-go no go decision. Right. As of next year, they're saying that by late next year, if you even bid on a contract, you have to have the certification. You've got to ring. Yeah, you got to you got to hand them over your certification or a copy of your certification. I, I, I heard a huge number. Three hundred thousand contractors will have to be certified as three hundred thousand contractors. contractors. So, and insane. how many contractors do you think there are in Hawaii doing DOD well, work? We have eleven military bases. So yeah, there's a and lot I of work out here. don't know that many contractors that are doing DOD work that are out there actually doing this today. No, I no. don't. I don't. I've got a, a few clients that have reached out uh, to me, and I don't need any more work, please. Um, that you know, they want to make sure. I'm taking work. I'm punt them to you because um, <laughs> they're now realizing that um, any new contracts and even the old ones are going to have to be um, follow these guidelines. So, right. right. So and in it, a five-year uh, cycle, when you renew one of these years, they're going to say, "Okay, now you have to add this in." 
Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I thought it was really, really um, insightful. Katie Arrington had that um, Who's Katie Arrington? webinar the other day. She's oh, yeah. the director of, um, uh, was it OU, OUSD? Oh, you oh, know, no, you another, gave the department. <laughs> office, office, <laughs> of, <laughs> under, uh, office of the Undersecretary of Defense? Yeah. Oh, wow. And so she's, so she's driving oh, wow. this program. And she was on a, a company called Exostar, had her on, on a talking webinar the other day about it. And her, she went directly to landscaping companies. I thought it was awesome. She said, yeah, so we've got landscaping companies out there who have all these plans for all the facilities of all of our bases. Oh, janitorial contracts. And she too, said this right? stuff exactly. yeah. this yeah. stuff is is definitely CUI. Yeah, it's and I was footage, it's exit the, points, the very first points. time I had heard someone acknowledge that something of that level. So people start to understand, wow, I do it have information everyone. that's very important. Yeah, sure. Right. She gave another example of a of CUI a, of a, of a, class of, uh, uh, controlled, uh, controlled unclassified information. Yeah. And she gave another example of a weld she was in a welding shop, so a four man welding shop looking at the you know, what what they were doing, and a guy had a, a, a blown up image of the weld that he was doing, of the part that he was welding on, and she said, can you shrink that? And and he had the whole aircraft. So there's oh, there's another that, example that just became of CDI. CDI. Yeah, 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 yeah control, control defense, control defense yeah, information. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's a, there's a, you know, just an example of the kind of information that's out there that the criminals are trying to get their hands on. Uh, maybe it's nation states, maybe it's criminals that want to sell it, whatever it is. But that's why they're going after these small businesses who are so unprotected and now so there's, open. There's some people that don't even know what they're doing is uh, something that could be exploited. Yeah, sure. Uh, for, for instance, they were doing a main water line uh, upgrade for one of our bases out here. Mm. And they published on the web the construction areas in the oh. route where they were to be doing the construction because they wanted to notify people the traffic was going to be oh, backed yeah. up. But then you know where the main water line is. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you do about that? I mean, this, if problems like that just... Tamper it? <laughs> <laughs> craziness, craziness. Hey, it's, it's hard to get, get this together. You know, it, it's uh, like we were saying before, this is painful for organizations to do because not mm -hmm. everyone has a dedicated cyber person. You know, right. most mom and pops, they have, you know, your cousin, your nep nephew, your son or daughter. Or the tech guy, the tech guy, yeah. right? And then they're responsible for all this cyber hygiene. And it's hard to go through this stuff, and then you're supposed to make a plan. Yes. you got to put down some policies and procedures. You need policies and procedures. You need plans. Um, the tool that you're going to implement. And again, if you're doing looking at the full-blown suite of uh, 800-171, that's 110 cyber controls. I hear 24 more are going to be added next year. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. Four and five. Yeah. I, I think for sure before we see Rev one, I think we'll see. I think we'll see quite a bit of changes. So we should get 06, Rev six point six this week, right? This first week in November, and I do believe that before Rev one, they said we should have what by you know February March, and I think we will see some diff some different things come into play. I gotta tell you, know. you this this process. When I first heard about it, I thought, no, it's federal government. This is gonna take years. Yeah, yeah but, they're no, they are ramping this up. That's yep. what rapidly. Yeah, I, and, I'm impressed. I think because it's sort of already been done, right? It's been it's been around a long time, like I said, since 2015, right? right and so right. it's really this has been hashed over. There's been a lot of people working on yeah. it, I think, for quite a while, just figuring out how to introduce it. Small yeah. business freaks out when you try to make it spend money that it doesn't want to spend. Oh, that's and, why the self-reporting thing yeah, failed. And, right? And, right yeah, and we didn't really talk about the fact that you know now, come September of 2020. Um, you know, if your bids, if the re request for proposal from the government says you must be CMMC level three, when you bid it, because that's a line item requirement of the bid, you'll be able to charge the government for that level of maturity assurance that they're asking for. And right. so this is what we've sort of all been waiting on is how do we get our money back for, you know, but implementing they haven't clarified all this. how you're going to get it yet. Well, what do you think? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Amazon gift card. That may come yeah. slow. An Amazon gift card? <laughs> oh, no, no, it has to be a Microsoft gift card. No, it's not that $10, oh, it's it's a $10 billion dollar deal. Oh, that's card. right. It'll be an Xbox. It'll be for the Microsoft store. That's yeah, a good right. idea. <laughs> think about that. Yeah, wow. that's right. Um, but you got to put this cost up front. And Andrew, you know from experience, this is quite painful. Yeah. Oh, and well, it's not inexpensive. Yeah. No. We're, we're, um, so we're in a, no, a, norm, a regular Azure environment currently. Uh, with our Office 365, and the difference between that one and our uh, the FedRAMP environment we're moving to is about 11 bucks per person per month. Explain to us why you had to go there. Um, to to because we're since we're a full cloud, I don't have any on-prem services, right? So all of my stuff is in the cloud. So therefore, there's um if you read the DFARS clause, it addresses where there's another clause in there. I forget the number, but it talks about cloud service providers right. and what their responsibility is and what your responsibility is. And so shared responsibility. Yeah, and so since I'm in a cloud environment, um, the environment that I'm in 
can be assured to the 800-171 controls, but it doesn't currently meet the DFARS clauses for uh, two sp specific areas. One of them being Incidents. Um, yeah, yeah. Forensic, forensic examination. Right. If the government, if I were to be breached and the government wants to forensically examine our, our, our hard drives, I've got to be able to provide those hard and drives. And they take them right in Office yeah. 365, you're in a shared environment with right. other people, so they Ex will not yeah. give those. And Except if you're going Office 365 GCC high. And that's what he's going And so, yeah. And so right. you know, if you're favorite. Office 365 GCC high, so there's like, you know, E1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then there's GCC. Government compute cloud. Yeah, government, then there's GCC, and then there's GCC high. Yeah. If you're GCC high, you are actually running isolated from everybody else yeah. yeah and they can come in and just take that entire sure and um, I think there's visual. some there's some other assurance that the uh, administrators of that environment are or have I think at least a green card or that they're American citizens yes. there's, so there's some definitely yeah, some, yeah, other, all of some that other assurance there. there and, and there's also the notification piece there's a 72-hour notification I think it's clause C um, so that which you don't get necessarily with your normalized Azure environment. You could put a tool there perhaps that gives it to you, but this, this is insured from the cloud service provider level that I'm gonna be able to notify the government within 72 hours if I've had a breach in my environment. Now, I love yeah. this environment because they're actually working on compliance controls in the GCC high that you can actually use to track your compliance. Yeah. Yes. You can there put are, it all in there. There are, there are a number of those already pre-written, so yeah. just a matter of you taking those and adopting them or, or adapting them for your organization. Um, so and not just uh, not just uh, NIST, but they also include PCI, yep. HIPAA, yep. Uh, SOX, uh, ISO, ISO 27001. 27, There's a yeah. lot of different the compliance models. And, and let's not forget the, mobile device management as well. Oh my so lord! The, uh, yes. All your yeah. all your mobile MDM. phones and everything, all that MDM oh, yeah. that has to be managed and tracked as well. The um, the other thing that because uh, we were kind of were talking about the money, I'll just finish that up real quick. The the actual runtime on that environment is only about five percent higher than the the, the regular GCC. Mm. So it isn't super exorbitant, but what I've got to be able to demonstrate for the government, in my opinion, I haven't tried to do this yet, is the difference in cost between my normalized environment right. and then that exactly. higher level of security environment that they've asked for. Delta. So, so they're going to want to know that. And, and how am I going to regain the CapEx? The CapEx cost to move and set up that environment and migrate all my data, that's pretty pricey stuff. And I hope to be able to get that back over time. Yeah, that was a. But they may crazy. say that that's that they may say that. Well, I mean, no, that's, that's great. That's hi, that's good cyber hygiene. Yeah, cost is so you, yeah, should, right. you should have been yeah. doing that anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's the delta. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that, that's what we're looking for is that delta. And, and then can I add a management fee on top of that? Because it's got to be managed, right? So right. perhaps I can charge the government for managing it. So yeah. these are some of the questions I'll be um, discussing that with uh, the, with uh, with. Uh, Director with down in Tampa in a couple of weeks at the as an NDIA event I'll be attending. Oh, so yeah, that's right. Hoping to um, hoping to get some clarity on some of these questions I have, or at least get them get them introduced. So they're I know they're a little early because they're still trying to mesh out the program yeah. elements it's, uh, themselves. But um, you know, I guess quick, didn't you just win an award and we don't have a lot of time? Paul Marcus, I did. What, what PSA, PSA Security Network gave me the Paul Marcus Award for collabor industry collaboration. Um, I've been doing a lot of work for our on behalf of the security industry with the, with the cyber community. And um, so, congratulations! So they, thank yeah, you. Congratulations. Yeah, no, thanks, guys. No, yeah, shake your hands. Hats off to you. Yeah. Yeah, let's do a head bump. Uh, head bump. <laughs> The, uh, uh, <laughs> I, you know, uh, so got, these icons of the industry received this award before. These guys I've known for years. Icon of the industry. Yeah, Jim, Jim oh, Henry and, and, and Mike Koblen and. Um, 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 I, I, I just, can't be in the same room with him. Uh, Bill Bowles and the amazing guys, you know. And so I, it was, um, I, I, you know, I got up there and talked about that that gravity of being associated with those guys. Now, what the question that really comes to your mind is. Am I that old? <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't talk about age. No, no, let's not go down that path. Gordon, is there anything you want to say before we get out of here? No, this is good. Everybody just, just you know, practice good cyber hygiene, and you better start looking at it's this scary stuff. It's scary contracts. You have to start looking at this. You have to. And we're going to come back uh, at least once a month and do DFARS for dummies Yeah. and give you updates on this process because, uh, yeah, by January, February, March of next year, uh, you're going to have to make a decision. Uh, I, I personally suggest you start doing this right now. Oh, yes. Yeah, uh, right away. Just your good, policies and procedures yeah. are going to be over 100 pages long. Right. It's going to be huge. Um, it's painful, but, uh, you know, uh, my company helps. It's worth work. it. And yeah. you can get paid back. Yeah. yeah. That's right. You can get paid back eventually. Keep, okay. keep all the bills you get from Dave. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for joining. And uh, come back and see DFARS for Dummies or our next episode in a couple of weeks. Until then, stay safe.